How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews, back with another review. And it is Duda CL time. It's been a while since I've not only had, now I've had a couple Duda CL beers, some Pesh Mortels and shit like that, but it's a very long time since I've reviewed a Duda CL beer, let alone a new one. Uh, so yes, it is Duda, Duda CL IPA time in the form of their Disco Soleil, I guess you would say, which is just a Disco Sun or something like that. Sun Disco, Solar Disco, something like that. Something to do with the sun. Anyway. Super excited to give this a whirl. Uh, we get uh, due to CL distribution in around the area, but it's very spotty. And a lot of their core offerings I love, and I'm really thankful I can get them now. Um, we don't see a lot of their, I don't want to say newer stuff, because this is, I believe this beer's been around for a while. Just never seen it, but just across the border in New York, I can find new stuff. And lo and behold, I saw this, I picked it up. There we go. No idea how new it is, because due to CL does some weird thing where they actually do bottle dating on the labels, but only in Canada and the United States you do like batch numbers, which is fucking weird. Anyway, as far as what it actually says on the bottle, it says, uh, du de ciel, disco so leil. Leil? Leil? Silent LDM? I don't know. Uh, India Pale Ale brewed with kumquats, which should be interesting. 6.5% alcohol by volume. Disco Soleil is a golden orange IPA with uh, evocative citrus and tropical fruit aromas. The lively hops and gentle malt flavors are balanced and pleasing equilibrium with the kumquat zest. Add some refreshing acidity for thirst quenching finish. So now I say kumquat zest. So that's that's curious. Um, for those who have never had a kumquat, a kumquat is like um, it's like a bizarro citrus fruit. Uh, most citrus fruits you get, whether it be a lemon or uh, uh, orange, neck, you know, uh, tangerine, little fucking sweeties, whatever fuck, grapefruit, whatever you want to call it. Flesh is usually sweet, and the skin and rind is bitter. Kumquats are pretty much exactly opposite of that. The, the rind itself is the, by far the sweetest part of the whole fruit, and the inside can be tart and almost sour. So what I saw was brewed with kumquats. I didn't know if it was going to be a tart, sour kind of IPA thing, but we're going to find out. Uh, Label-wise, it's awesome. All, it's, all of Duda Ciel's labels are great. This one's a little departure from the norm. A lot of their stuff tends to be a little bit more, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but a little bit different, a little bit more out there. I guess you would say this is a more traditional illustration style, but I still really fucking dig it. And they're still champions of not only the label world, but of the twist-off cap world, because I always forget, and I just remembered... All the DCLs are twisties, which is just fucking hilarious for a brewery of this fucking caliber. So yeah, let's see what this sucker has to offer. Super Haze. You can see it actually on the pour itself. Um, quarter of a pinky finger, just north of white head. Decent creaminess. Um, and Super Haze. It just looks like a nice hazy IPA is basically what it is. Really excited to get a nose on this. For those kumquats, but a golden honeyish kind of hue to it. So yeah, it's gonna nose. It's definitely sweet. You're getting a lot of that sweet, and it's it's hard to explain if you've never had a kumquat before. It's a sweet rindiness. It's not a sweet fleshiness. So you get those kind of that smell of that kind of like pithy earthiness, but it's not bitter. You get the sweetness to it. And you definitely get that in there. You do get a little bit of this kind of, I don't want to say sour or tart even, kind of like muddled bitterness in there. A little bit of sweet malt. And that's pretty much it. Definitely on a citrus side. Definitely on an orange kind of citrus side. Which, you know, kumquats are. So, yeah, I mean, she smells like a really nice, well-done, fruity, citrus-leaning IPA. She looks really cool. Let's see what she tastes like. Cheers. I dig it. I like it. A lot of biscuity malt there. Again, I don't know how old this is, so hopefully it's not too old. But you get a nice, decent kind of biscuity malt off of it, so it's got a nice malt base. You're definitely getting a lot of those kind of citrus, orangey notes that you use typical of what kind of, sort of, close thing I can explain what a, um, a kumquat flesh or zest is. You are getting... A bit of bitterness there. I don't know if it's hot bitterness. It might be part of the kumquat itself, but it's pleasant. 
it's not overly bitter, not overly drying, and just kind of balance out some of that sweetness. Nice mouthfeel to it. Really nice beer. It tastes fresh to me. So I don't know how old it is, but regardless, I'm a fan. Uh, really nice, solid beer. Something I like to crush a bunch of. Taste bigger than it actually is, which is pretty much due to sales for for a when it comes to beers um a lot of beers they make you get a four percent it tastes like a six percent you get a six it tastes like an eight you get an eight it tastes like a ten they make beers bigger than what the actual abv is and with this coming in at 6.5 percent alcohol by volume by volume it's tasting way closer to eight nine than it would be six so yeah let's talk about it is it one of the better ipas i've had as of late no um i've had so many good ones and this one is definitely on the outside looking in But it's really nice. Is it one of the better Canadian-made IPAs? Yes, by far. I mean, my favorite uh, IPA, double IPA, is uh, Bronin from High Road Brewing. That's by far and away my favorite um, IPA, double IPA, but come out of Canada. But this is definitely up there. Um, would I buy it again? Yes. The price point's a little... Mm, actually, I don't know if I'd buy it again. The price point is right around $5 a bottle. Imported due to CL prices, that's pretty much what you're looking at. So that price point sucks a little bit. You'd almost want this to be around three dollars a bottle to four dollars a bottle. So you're kind of clocking in anywhere between twelve to sixteen dollars for a four pack, but maybe even cheaper than that. So yeah, I might buy it again just to drink one every now and then, but nothing I'd really run to. Uh, availability, like I said, haven't seen this in uh, my area of the woods, but about an hour or so away from where I live, I can grab it. So the closer you get to Montreal, the easier it should be to get. And let's say this, if you like, well, if you like this, if you like kumquats, kumquats for one, just because it's an odd fruit and you definitely get the kumquatiness, because that's a fucking word, uh, in the beer. Uh, so it's cool to see that. Um, you don't get as much as that sour as you'd expect, but, uh, or tartness, but you definitely get that kind of unique fleshiness of a kumquat. Um, if you like nice, hazy IPAs, if you like interesting beers, and that's kind of where Due to CL kind of makes its hay for me, is that uh, while their beers may not be the best beers I've ever had, they're always interesting and always really well made, and that's this beer to a T. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, if you did or you didn't or somewhere in between, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And like, subscribe, all that fun, fun stuff. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, untapped. Four of those places. You can find me, uh, Master Beers, in all four of those places if you want to check us out anywhere else. Yeah, another review down, so... Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice, unique, and fun IPA right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.